what's up guys welcome back to the channel so today we're going to talk about a couple of different topics one being that this news came out about two or three months ago a show that netflix is producing uh called chaos and if you've been a subscriber to the channel for a very long time you know that i love anything that has to do with greek norse or any sort of mythology for that matter and chaos revolves around greek mythology so when i saw this i thought it was very interesting because it seems like netflix is coming back to doing original shows they've been doing a lot of foreign shows and movies as of late and it's become very tiresome because you run out of interesting things to watch especially interesting things that is made in part from the united states now i have seen a lot of things uh that comes from other countries on netflix um and and they are pretty good but when we're talking about Netflix, because Netflix is an American-made uh, production company. Uh, at least I'm assuming they are. I think they are, if that's last time I remember hearing. And Netflix, a couple years ago, was going through this, this hard time where their numbers weren't up to where they needed them to be to keep producing the movies and the shows that they wanted to netflix is synonymous with canceling shows after one season even before the first season's up and like you i know a lot of us is tired of that because there's a lot of good shows on netflix that have come out and we're waiting for a season two and and, and no season two and a lot of shows that the fans loved a lot of people loved a lot of people wanted to see uh the show end on a nice series ending and and it never happened so when i when i heard about this show called chaos on netflix i was excited but i'm also kind of i'm also kind of cautious about it simply because Netflix is synonymous with with not finishing shows. So we're going to read a little bit about what this show is about and why we should be excited and or not excited for it. Why we should be concerned. Now, chaos is coming and Jeff Goldblum is king of the gods. That right there. I, I'm a little me personally. Because Jeff Goldblum is no stranger to playing a primordial being. He plays the Grandmaster in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is an ancient uh, celestial being. Um, but that's more of a comedic character that he's playing that role as. And Zeus, from pop culture to TV shows to movies, Zeus is an arrogant asshole. That's self-centered. He's a he's a womanizer. He's a cheater. Uh, in some instances, he's a rape. I can't say that, but he's the big R word. Um, and now we have a different version of what Zeus seems to be going uh, for, or chaos seems to be going for, as far as these gods go. So from Jurassic Park to Super Bowl memes, Jeff Goldblum is at the pinnacle of cool. But what if he were the pinnacle of everything? That's the question. Chaos at, that's the question Chaos asks. As the new series puts Gold, uh, Goldblum atop of Mount Olympus, the upcoming drama takes everything we know about Greek mythology and turns it on its head with a contemporary twist, all with Goldblum Zeus. Cruel king of the gods at the center. Now they're going to be playing the Zeus up as more as a cruel god. And from the, the 45 second trailer, we see that he's ordering and he's not asking, right? The first footage of Chaos reveals we're about to see a new side of Goldblum. Yes, you can expect Zeus to exude quirky charm as he rocks an, uh, an, an invaluable, I can't say that word, invaluable tracksuits. 
But Zeus is also an all-powerful being who's determined to hold on to the status by any means necessary. When Zeus asks for respect, it's a command and not a request. So get your head out of the clouds and keep reading to learn everything you want to know about this darkly comic show, including details about the plot and the cast. Now, I've been no stranger on this channel to, to say that I hate seeing gods in two piece uh, French or American suits. And, and now it looks like he's going to be rocking in Adidas track suits. I, I get it. I understand it that if you're wanting to be part of the world that you created, you're going to rock, you know, Rolexes. And I just I don't I don't personally like it. Um, that's personally not for me, but I do understand if people out there likes it and, and, and show runners like it. Uh, Zeus from Percy Jackson on top of Mount Olympus was wearing a wearing a three piece suit. And I get it. If you're wa walking among the mortals that you created, you want to kind of blend in, rock that three piece track suit, rock a T-shirt, rock a Hawaiian shirt. Do whatever you want to do. But if you're sitting atop of Mount Olympus, if you're in a realm that man isn't supposed to venture into, why especially in a Mount, why especially at or in Mount Olympus are you rocking human clothing? Let us see that Greek attire. I, I, I would love to see if you're going to really dive into Greek mythology, give us Greek attire while we're exploring this world or this universe that Zeus has created and the showrunners has created and they're trying to show us. Let us become fully immersed in that. And then when he ventures out to the mortal plane, put him in a tracksuit. I have no problem with that. What is chaos about? It's about the pantheon of gods, mortals, and every one in between inhabiting the intriguing world of chaos. Zeus is at the top of the mythological food chain as the king of the gods, a position he has held, he has enjoyed for quite some time. Then one day he discovers the unthinkable wrinkle on his forehead, paranoia builds, leading, leading the supreme deity down a dangerous and unstable path. Zeus is convinced his fall is nigh and sees omens of doom everywhere and he's right to be worried because zeus a uh, one-time friend and one-time prisoner prometheus is uh, orchestrating a plan to bring him down the plan involves three desperate humans all of whom are totally unaware of their cosmic significance or the part they must play in saving the world as zeus battles his greatest fears the rest of his family is scheming and failing in their own ways. There's Zeus plotting wife Hera, Ozark Janet McTeer, his com his complicated brother Hades, landscapers David Thewlis, who David Thewlis is an amazing actor, and Poseidon, Avatar the Whale Waters, Cliff Curtis, who is another amazing uh actor, and his rebellious son Dionysus. Industries Nepin Rezwan. I apologize as if I'm butchering that. So this show revolves just around a paranoid Zeus. A paranoid Zeus that doesn't want to get old. A paranoid Zeus that is afraid of losing his title as King of the Gods. Which I think in theory is a very interesting concept. Can it be executed properly with great writing? Yes, I think it can be executed properly with great directing. Yes, I think it can be executed properly. But will it be executed properly? That is the question. Because Netflix is very hit or miss with a lot of these shows that has to do with gods or adaptations. Or hell, even original ideas. Netflix is a hit or miss uh, production company. Who made Chaos? Chaos isn't creator and writer. What? Chaos isn't creator and writer Charlie Covell's first brush with the brutal and the irre irreverent. I, some of these words, I'm sorry. The, ex uh, the, ex 
the executive producer also created the genre bending Y series, Y series, The End of the Effing World, which won two BAFTAs. The rest of Chaos's team includes director Georgia Banks Davies, Davis and Runyararo Mafumo. I apologize if I'm butchering these names. Executive producer Jan Featherstone, Chris Fry, Katie Carpenter, Banks Davies, or Davis, Nine Letterman, Tanya, we're just going to call her Tanya, and John Woodward, producer Harry Monday, and Georgia Christo, who won, who wrote episode six. Who is in the Chaos's cast? We don't need to get into all that, but we're going to say Goldblum, McTeer, Thulis, Curtis, Rezwan all portray some of the gods of chaos. The rest of the cast includes um, Killian Scott as Orphice, or Orphices, Aurora, who from Westworld, is Riddy. See, most of these people that I've never even heard of, but they're portraying the gods. The only chaos footage that we have out right now is the 45 second clip that Netflix has released. And apparently the movie is coming out this year, which kind of scares me. And it comes out at the end of the year. We have yet to see any other footage from chaos. Um, but I'm, I'm, I am excited for this. I do want more uh, series and workings of God's monsters i do want a lot more of that because me as a person that is interested in that thinks that's a very interesting and a vast repertoire that you can dive into you can make some of these stories your own percy jackson or disney plus um clash of the titans the last two clash of the titans movie even the original one uh blood of zeus over on netflix you know, we have the God of War games that I play, and you guys know I love those that dive into different mythologies. Right now, we're on the Norse pantheon. Next, we may go to the Egyptian or the Chinese or the Japanese or the Mayan. So all of the, and I even have comic books outside of Marvel and DC, like Image Comics, that deal with gods and monsters. I'm reading something right now about um, gods that forgot they, that was they had a spell cast on them and they forgot they were gods and they're living among they're living as humans. I really love these characters, these titles, these stories. So give us more of these stories. There's a lot of people out there like me that love these stories. So give us more of that. We want to see more of that. We're asking for more of that. If you make it, don't cancel it after the first season. Okay? Because Netflix loves canceling shows after the first season especially shows that perform well and then they give us more mediocre shows that we didn't even ask for right so we're not we're not we're, we're not asking for all of these crappy uh shows give us more shows that we can lose ourselves and immerse ourselves in right so the next topic that we're going to speak about is something the last couple days have been just packed right the next thing we're going to be talking about is venom the last dance as you can see right here on my screen they released their trailer for that two days ago not yesterday but the day before yesterday and i'm not going to do a trailer reaction because i already watched the trailer i was on vacation with my family and they released the trailer while I was on vacation, me and my girlfriend sat together and watched the trailer because she's also interested in a lot of these MCU and DCU uh, uh, titles. Um, she's not really a huge Venom fan. She loves Deadpool, though. Uh, our son loves Spider-Man. Um, our daughter loves Cyborg from the DC universe, Victor Stone. So I'm trying to immerse them more into these characters but she has seen the other two venom movies i have seen the other two venom movies the first one at the time that it came out was something different 
than we expected, but it was also something that was enjoyable because of Tom Hardy dynamic with himself. Tom Hardy's dynamic with himself. The second one completely missed me. Didn't enjoy it. They could have went somewhere amazing with it, kind of playing up uh, uh, Cassidy's uh, character as like a Hannibal Lecter type character that could have been been in theory very scary and be very well done. But these movies come out as quirky, as a, a buddy cop uh, a film, being that the buddy cop is yourself. You know, it, it's you playing yourself and it comes off as quirky. And I and I think sometimes they really miss the mark as far as as far as it goes. And I think that making these movies PG-13 to try to accommodate a larger audience is what's missing the mark. These movies, especially with a character like Venom, needs to be R rated. Now, I know a lot of you are about to say, but Anthony, this is the multiverse. This isn't a Venom that does all of that. This is more of an anti-hero Venom. The multiverse is an excuse for bad writing. The multiverse is an excuse to make mediocre movies and shows. Now, if you get a mediocre movie or show that no one wants any part of you could say it's the multiverse like in the eternals we still have tiamat sticking out of the earth no prior and or current mcu properties have covered why there's a giant celestial still sticking out of the earth we have gotten none of that so now i think they're going to go down the road of saying that was part of a different universe no wonder why we don't we don't have any news on it it was part of a different universe these three movies first one was all right i still watch the first one to this day second one i have i watched once never again me and my girlfriend sat up and watched venom the last dance we watched the trailer me personally i enjoyed the trailer it looks a lot different than the first two movies we got isn't it isn't it looks like an adventure film it's going to different locations venoms venom species of symbiotes are coming to the planet to invade and take over a venom invasion movie is is it seems pretty cool again in theory if it's executed properly now I'm hoping that the symbiote, symbiote God makes an appearance. I've been waiting for that. But it doesn't seem like we're going to get that. This seems like the last solo Venom movie until he, he, he crosses paths with Spider-Man. Now, the name is very comedic to me. I personally think the movie should be should have been and I told my girl this the other day. I think the Venom movie should have been called Venom Till Death Do Us Part. Venom the Last Dance just it doesn't resonate well with me. Now in the trailer we did see a lot of cool shots. The one that, that is, is is going over my Twitter feed the most is the Venom horse. That, that, that shit was, that shit was, that, I, I, that was cool. I enjoyed seeing that. My mouth dropped open when I saw that. But it's Tom Hardy playing just a different version of Tom Hardy. He's really good with playing himself differently. Like sometimes you forget that he's playing himself in these films and, and, and people go to see this because they love seeing Tom Hardy play Tom Hardy, but a different version of Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is a, I'm not taking that away from the man. He is amazing with playing a character that is his self. And you forget that he's playing himself. Because sometimes I'd be forgetting Venom is just Tom Hardy. I'll admit it. Do I think this movie is going to be good? 
personally, from seeing what we saw in that trailer, yes, I think this is going to be way better than the first and the second one. Now, can they edit these trailers to make it look that way? Yes. Am I hoping that it'll be really good? Yes. Am I still concerned because this is a PG-13 movie and Venom is a PG-13 character? Or at least I think it's still PG-13 because they showed in the trailer Venom biting heads off. And in the other two movies, they would usually cut away from that. Um, so, I don't, I, I personally don't know. I think that this is still a PG-13 property. I have to do a little little more research on that to to um to be able to give you a definite and then I'll I'll post it on my communities tab on YouTube but I'm just waking up to do this video so forgive me if I've been stumbling and tripping over my words I'm not I'm tired I just had an, I just we, me and my me and my girl just had a baby so we're we're, we're all over I'm all over the place it has nothing to do with her she's still sleeping I want her to sleep my beautiful woman I, she she deserves that so but this seems more like it's dipping into that tv 14 or maybe even pg just parents guidance instead of parents guidance 13 and up type thing but it, this is very interesting this is something that i am looking into um, this is something that I do want. It hit cinemas October 25th, which my girl was like, wow, all of these movies coming out in October. And I was like, it's, it's around that Halloween season. It's a very Venom's a very Halloween type character. So, of course, they're going to drop it in October. Me personally, do I think they should be dropping these in October? Hell no. I just think they should, you know, hell, it's a summer block. It's, if this is going to be a summer blockbuster movie, drop it in the summer, you know. Again, people go to see Venom. People go to see Tom Hardy. People go to see Spider-Man Easter eggs. So why not give it to them when, first of all, kids are out of school. It's not cold out. Drop it in the summer. Hell, people are going on vacation. They'll, they'll probably want to go to the movies. Mommy, I want to go see Venom. Daddy, I want to go see Venom. Do you make more money just dropping it in the summer. You're not going to make anything in the winter. I guarantee you that's going to be a topic of conversation that Venom was a box office blow and all it is. It is it's only because it came out at a time where people are going back to school. Kids are getting back into the groove of things. Parents are going to work. It's cold out. No one's going to want to go out. You know, drop it in the summer. Just do that. Jesus. That's all. The last thing that we're going to talk about is something that dropped um yesterday and i saw on twitter that it was supposed to drop yesterday and totally forgot that it was going to drop yesterday and we're talking about something that i've personally been looking forward to called alien romulus this is the official trailer. We had a tease a couple months ago. We did have a tease a, 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 a couple months ago as far as this went. And why did it do that? It kicked out my uh, screen recording. I don't know why I did that. But we're going to sit here and react to this trailer together because I have yet to see this. This came out yesterday. I, I was supposed to do this video last night, but I'm waking up this morning to do it. I was just I was just so exhausted. We had the teaser trailer two months ago. Now we have the official two minute trailer. And in my opinion, if you're going to give us an actual trailer, give us a three minute trailer. The teaser trailer was a minute and 20 seconds. The actual trailer is two minutes and one second. You're only giving us 40 more seconds of fully footage. OK, give us a whole three minute trailer. We we can all appreciate another three minute trailer, four minute trailer. Hell, if you're going, if, if you want to um, give us a little more, give us a five minute trailer. It's been done. It's been done. But being that Prey came out a couple of years ago, it was wildly renowned. Everybody that I've told about that movie or showed that movie to enjoyed the movie. I mean, when me and my girl started first started dating, I sat her down and we watched the movie. She loved it. She's not really into the 
aliens and predators property but she did like that i've seen prometheus i've seen the second prometheus I, i've seen the original alien movies i've seen the original predator movies so of course i was looking forward to alien romulus the last alien movie we got and i forgot the name of it i think it was avp requiem Yeah, we're not even going to discuss that. Um, so let's sit here and watch the trailer. And I'll give you my thoughts after. Is this really where you want to spend the rest of your life? You know, you know, I don't. And this is our only ticket out of here. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to go ahead and order my tickets. Um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and order my tickets. It comes out next month. Um, I will be taking the day off from work to 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 go to Synergy and watch this because they seem like they're going back to their roots with this one. And the reason why I love the original movies with Sigourney Weaver the movies that came out in the 80s was because they gave you that feeling of isolation they gave you that feeling of being cut off from other life And being that this seems like there's only going to be maybe seven or eight people aboard a ship. And they get cut off from civilization and now they have to figure out how to survive a creature they've never encountered. Has me sold. Because they're going back to their roots. They're taking it back to the beginning. Which is something that this franchise has been lacking. They're trying to do something different. They tried to do something different. Ridley Scott produced and directed the Prometheus movies. Where they tried to give you an explanation of where all of this came from. And Prometheus was good. Prometheus Covenant was hit or miss. 
But they tried to give you more of a spiritual understanding from how all of this started. And I think that's where you miss the mark. Everything doesn't have to be gods and demons and all of this. The universe is vast. The universe is big. Hell, now we're diff we're visiting different multiverses. There's different universes out there. It's okay to make this like, okay, so some explorers went to a different planet and brought something back that they didn't know about, didn't research, didn't have an understanding for. And now these things are reproducing. These things are are killing and and, and savaging uh, across the planet and across the universe. And this is why this is the way that it is. I think Prometheus, Prometheus went in and tried to erase everything that was to create something that everything to create something that everything could be. And I think that's where they really missed their mark because you're trying to go in and destroy an already established universe. Like I said, Prey, which is the Predators franchise, which is the direct competitor for Alien, the Alien franchise, Prey took it back to well beyond the beginning when they first visited the planet because no one knows definitively when these creatures first visited the planet. And, 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 and they hit the mark on the head. They have a second movie coming out with, I think, a spinoff coming out. Now, can we eventually get Aliens vs. Predators again? Yes, if it's done again, and I will say this again, if it's done properly, if it's done correctly. But you have to write it. Properly, It has to be directed correctly. And you have to have a producer that doesn't want to go in and change the director's vision and change how the story is written. And I, one thing I can say about Ridley Scott is he barely gets involved when it comes to these films. Now, he did create the universe. So, of course, the creator of the universe is going to have some input. But if you leave the directors alone and actually leave great directors alone, Don't Breathe was a good movie. OK, if you leave these directors alone and give them the opportunity to actually show you this is not this is nothing more than a goddamn horror movie. This is a horror movie. Don't Breathe was a horror movie. You get that feeling of isolation. You, you actually feel like you're there with these characters. You're peeking around the corner with these characters. You're sitting in a the movie theater trying not to breathe with these characters. You're reacting with these characters. That's what makes a great movie. That's what makes the movie immersive. That's what makes people want to come back and see what else you have to offer. Prometheus did take it to another planet. Or have it on the ship. So it did give you, still give you that feeling of isolation. Because these are characters in an unknown location. And, and they're just doing shit. They're doing shit that regular people would do. Like you go to a foreign planet. Well not regular people because I wouldn't do that shit personally. But you're just you're exploring your scientists. So your job is to explore and study. But I'm looking forward to this. I'm 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 looking forward to this. Let's read the description to see what the synopsis is. Alien Romulus takes the phenomenally successful alien franchise back to its roots while scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station. A group of young space colonizers come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. OK, and then it goes into the stars and a lot of these stars are, are you know, you know, most of these like Isabel uh, merged from The Last of Us, you know, uh, Callie's uh, Spanny from Civil War, which was a recent movie. 
um, Fade Alvarez from Evil Dead and Don't Breathe. Okay, you have you have um, Rubbo. Uh, am I saying that right? You have another character from the Don't Breathe too, based on characters created by Dan O'Bannon and uh, Ronald Shusset. Alien Romulus is produced by Ridley Scott. Okay, so who who was the creator of the original Alien franchise? So it's stated right there. It's taking it back to its roots. Let's let's read some of the comments before I get up off of here. But in space, you can hear only your tenets. People who didn't come from TikTok are allowed to like this comment. Uh, the way they used that scary thumping noise to start the trailer and transition to it being the chest burster scene was terrifying. This year got actually saved. <laughs> this year got actually saved by AWT 27X. Now that. That chest burster scene that we saw in here. There was a lot of scenes in here that, that, that made my skin crawl. And that was one of them. In space, no one can hear you scream. But apparently, everything else is loud as fuck. <laughs> that face hugger was in the movie. <laughs> and it was not who knows. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't wait for this movie. I will be there front row. If you guys like the discussion and reaction, please don't hesitate to subscribe and share this video. I'm going to go watch this trailer again. And hell, I may even do a breakdown soon. I don't know. I, I don't really do breakdowns like that. I've done them. But I may do a breakdown of this and we may discuss this. I'm going to go watch what Mr. H has to say about it. If you guys aren't subscribed to Mr. H, go subscribe to his channel. I know Double Toast is going to come out with a video about this either today or tomorrow because not even 24 hours after that Venom trailer came out, they were speaking on it. I'm actually currently watching that video. I stopped their video to come in and do this one. So you guys go and check those uh, channels out. Um, also, share mine and subscribe to it. I love you guys. I'm out. I'm going to go. Um, and someone said, I could have sworn Ridley Scott said the next movie was supposed to be the engineers hunting down David, which leads to the war between the engineers versus the xenomorphs versus the humans, which he did say that. He did. He did say that. Um. Today it started, but it won't last long, so you better know what he's talking about. What does that have to do? What does any of these comments have to do with what this person just said? Anyway, Ridley Scott did state that, it, again, the engineers were going to be involved. But you guys like, comment, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family. I will be posting t uh, clips of this video on TikTok, so look out for that in the description. I love you guys and I thank you for your endless support and I hope you all have a wonderful day.